I hold live masterclasses where I answer questions for women on the motherhood journey and post clips on this YouTube channel. Click the link in the description below to join my email list to find out when they are. Today's question is, how do I deal with the tension in the relationship with my partner on top of the fertility difficulties? So first of all, you want to remove the word difficulties and any sense of it in your situation. You want to reframe that. So it's not about difficulties. It's, you know, I understand that you feel that it is a struggle. And part of the struggle too, is that you are not really being in the flow with life. You're resisting where you are. So part of it is just accepting where you are and just staying focused on your vision. Don't let the circumstances uh, distract you and for, from where you want to go. And because if you focus on the difficulty, the struggle, if that's what you feel, you're going to create more of that. So you want to ease that and soften that of just reframing it to, okay, this is where I am. This is what I accept about it. Uh, don't create any more drama than there needs to be. And by drama, I mean your interpretation of it and the stories that you attach to your journey. It just is, end of story. Uh, you know, don't have any pity parties about it. It's a very low frequency state when you're in a state of struggle. So that's the, the first thing that I want to mention is just be very careful about the wording that you have, that you put out into the universe and what you're telling yourself and to other people. Okay. So if it's fertility related tension, you're creating too much importance around the baby and that's unbalancing your relationship. You want to drop the baby so that you can focus on the relationship, focus on reconnecting with your partner. It is the magic of your relationship with your partner that you can call in your baby. If you're not getting something from your partner, like enough love, and then you're trying to get that from your baby, it's not going to happen. You need to be able to love yourself enough that you don't need love from an external source. When you come from that place of self-empowerment, everything flows to you much more easily. And the tensions just naturally just drop off because you're not seeking it from something outside of yourself. You want to ask yourself, why do you want to have a baby? What emotions and feelings do you hope to feel when you're holding your baby? You need to be able to generate those feelings without the baby being there. And that's what allows you to be a mag that's what allows you to become a magnet and attract that baby into your experience. Your baby's soul is already there in, in answer to your call. The ability to be able to materialize this onto the physical plane, that can take some time. And so because there is a time buffer, you want to be able to embody the experience, the feelings and the emotions that you expect to have when you um, have your baby in your present situation right now. Part of easing the tension in uh, re your relationship with your partner is just re really appreciating your partner's positive aspects. I recommend every day telling him three things you appreciate about him. Write them down and read them. Write down a list of all the things that you appreciate about him and read them to shift your energy around your relationship and stop focusing on what that he's doing wrong. The more that you do that, the more wrong he will become because wherever your focus is, it's like a magnifying uh, lens on whatever your attention is on. So a lot of times with um, like partners, they may be like nine out of 10 things that they do really well or great that you love about them. And then there's like that one little thing that just annoys you. And it's because people can tend to make that one thing such a big deal that it starts to grow and amplify and then crowd out all of the positive things so that you don't even notice the positive things or appreciate the positive things. And that's where the imbalance is. And that's why it's really helpful to write down a list of the, all of the great things that he does for you, is for you, how he's there for you, like all of that. And it's, and it's a daily practice until it becomes so natural that you just overlook the things that bother you about him. Because really, almost all relationships, unless there's physical abuse, um, unless there's like emotional abuse, you're in that relationship for a reason. You're in it to have, have certain lessons. Relationships are not meant to be easy. They are meant to challenge you. And so 
if you don't resolve and figure out what your lesson is in this relationship, it will come in another relationship in one way or the other. I promise you that. And so it's better to just focus on the relationship that you have right now, assuming it's not abusive and no one's going and you're not going to get harmed, figure out what your lesson is and learn it. And so when, when that's done and have that commitment in, in the marriage. So a lot of people, uh, I think the question was, I think the person's married. So if you're in a committed relationship, what I've noticed in working with clients is a lot of times they have their foot one, um, they have one foot in the door and one foot out the door. When you're not committed like that, it's very easy to go one way or the other. Just commit to the relationship working out because you're not going to find a perfect person elsewhere. Everyone has their faults. You're going to have to deal with it at one point or another, every relationship will have that. And so part of the, part of the, um, our challenge is being able to appreciate all of the great things about that person while we're having these moments of challenge and contrast. And so uh, really kind of getting into that practice. The other thing too is having baby is a, is, it's a feminine act. I mean, it's about the most feminine act that you can have, right? Men can't have it. So that means that you need to be in your divine feminine. You need to be in your femininity and own up to it. That means as feminine, you have your heart open, you're vulnerable, you're flowing with life, and you're surrendering. That's feminine energy. Masculine energy is completely, di completely different energy. It's much more assertive, commanding, linear straightforward, just very structured. And you know the difference. You can feel the difference between masculine and feminine energy. Fem feminine energy is very flowing. That's how it feels, very soft. <laughs> that's, the, that's actually what frustrates <laughs> women. That's what actually, that's what frustrates, frustrates men about women is how like we change our minds all the time. How we're like going one way, you know, one way now and then another way, another time. Men aren't, men aren't built like that. So that's our feminine energy. You want to allow your husband to lead, allow your male partner to lead. If you're in a same sex relationship, one person has to be, has to have the masculine energy and one has to, one has to have the feminine energy in order to have the polarity. So even in a same sex relationship where you're, uh, you're in the motherhood journey, you still have to acknowledge that whoever is intending to carry the uh, baby, that person has to be in feminine energy. That person cannot be in masculine energy because it's contradicting <laughs> feminine energy. So assuming that we're talking about uh, um, heterosexual relationships, because that's where I work with most of the time, right? You allow the masculine energy or your husband to lead. A lot of relationship problems come from the woman trying to control the man or the masculine energy because he, because he doesn't do things quickly enough or good enough, you know, granted, we are, we, you know, women tend to be quicker and just because we're used to running the household more. I mean, we just are better at, at it. The problem is that you chisel away at his self-confidence when you criticize him. And you're basically saying that he's not good enough as he is. Women need to feel respect from their women. And this is a really huge issue, societal issue right now. They do not feel the respect from the women. Women are controlling are getting way too much into their masculine. They're bringing that masculine aspect that's very necessary in the workplace and they're bringing it into the personal relationship. When you do that, you have two masculine energies fighting for power and it will, not, and it will completely erode the attraction that was there in the first place. And I know many of you have felt it. If you, if you feminize him and emasculate him enough so that now you have two feminine energies, you now have two friends and the attraction is completely gone. And we've all experienced that as well. Men need to feel respect from their women. So we need, they need to have a job. You give them a job and you let them do it and you don't get in their way about it. Yes, they may be slower about it. Yes, they may not load the dishwasher as well as you would like, but it's okay. Because at the end of the day, who cares? right? Women don't need respect. We need to feel cherished. And men will cherish us when they feel res respected. It's a cyclical process. It's a give and take, give and take. Okay. 
So speaking of give and take, you want to move the transactional aspect out of your relationship. So that transitional aspect of the tit for tat, quid pro quo, if you do this, then I'll do that kind of thing. You're in a committed relationship. You want to come from a place of unconditional love. You're at a stage that you can do that because you are in a marriage, you are committed. Ignore what you don't like because there will be something that you don't like about every single person that you meet. No one is going to be perfect. You want to just really be clear about holding on to that vision of a happy nuclear family, regardless of the current circumstances, because that's your end goal. When you can hold on to that vision, a lot of the stuff that's happening in the present here and now, they just don't bother you as much because the end goal is more important to you. And so when you can stay centered and stable and um, just really aligned with that vision, that energy is very calming. It's very peaceful. And it neutralizes a lot of the tension automatically without you ever needing to address it. It just never happens. And I experienced this really, really clearly with my kids where I just, you know, I was just getting so irritated <laughs> with them because <laughs> they wouldn't listen. And then at, at a certain point, I was like, okay, I'm just going to surrender to this and just let them be who they are. I'm just going to focus on my own stability so that I don't get triggered by what they say. And that's where you have what you have to work on, where you don't get triggered by what's being said to you, because understand that the other person may be saying something out of their own fears, their own insecurities, their own doubts. And so they're projecting it out onto you. At the core, you love them. That's why you chose to commit to them. That's why you chose to marry them. You, at, you want to hold that highest version of them. You want to do that for them, even when they can't do it for themselves. Because when you can do that, man, do they just really just calm down and just start to align with you. And it's such a natural process that you, it's, it's almost like you really don't have to do anything. And it's really, and this is why I don't work with couples so much. I focus generally tend to focus on the women because the, the work is within the individual. You, when you come from such a stable, aligned place, they will just connect with you. And they will, they will be on the journey with you unless they're completely not conscious and not awake. And then, then they'll fall away. And that's going to happen. And that happens sometimes. And um, that's a natural process. But when you are able to be stable, when you're able to come from this place of accepting what is and not having judgments and not blaming another person for it, not feeling a victim, they they love that energy. They want to be in that energy of what you project. And so you do that by holding on to the vision of that family that you want to create. Okay. Uh, when they're doing something or saying something that you don't like, I would just suggest that you pause and just take a few moments to think about how they're reflecting back to you, your own fears or insecurities. Because a lot of times they're just, they're just mirrors they are your mirror. The external world is your mirror. If you want the reflection in a mirror to smile at you, you need to smile first. Everyone is just you projected out because we're all one. So ignore the circumstances and focus on how you can maintain your balance and your own well-being within, your, within yourself, regardless of what's happening outside of you. If you like this content, like, subscribe, and share this video. Stay tuned to this channel where I help women over 35 and into their 40s manifest the healthy baby they dream of. This is Julie Chang, and I'll see you soon. Bye now.